Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Current of Inductor, an answer to Riddle on an Internet Tutorial. The tutorial in question was posted at the Electronics Tutorials website and it is about an inductor and how it operates. So here are the basics. We have an inductor, there is a switch, voltage source, and this switch is turned on and off. This shows the operation of the switch. And we have the relationship between the voltage on the inductor and the, the IDT, the rate of the current change. And we see here the increase of the current, saturation, constant value, and then decrease. And this is the voltage on the inductor. There is an extensive explanation of the waveforms and how they are being generated. I've copied some of it here. And what it says in general is that as the switch is turned on, the current is going up in a slope. And then due to DC or pure resistance of the coil, uh, we have here sort of a constant current. And then as the switch is turned off, disconnected, then we have a current going down also in a straight slope. And here are shown the voltage on the inductor during the positive slope and the negative slope, and they are like triangular waveforms. So the riddle went as follows. How many errors can one find in this tutorial, assuming that the time constant L over R is much smaller than T on, that is, this is T on. And how many errors can one spot in this tutorial, assuming that the time constant is much larger than T on, that is, again, we have a large time constant. This depends of course the ratio of the inductor to the resistance. Let me talk first of all about some of the notation here. Here there are some marking of the voltage, positive here, and the current. And here is the basic equation, V minus L di dt. Unfortunately, these notations are wrong. And the correct ones are the following. If you connect the inductor to a battery, you'll have a di dt going this way. And then the plus will be here and the minus will be here. So if you mark plus and minus here, so this is the positive polarity of the voltage. So therefore you don't need the minus and you don't need the minus here, okay? So this is just a question of notation, but uh, let's pause here for a second and ask ourselves, why is this so? I mean, we know this is the case, but why is it? Well, you can quote some basic laws, but there is a inherent reason for the polarity thing. I mean, it's just not a, just a law that, that is written somewhere. And it has to do with the conservation of energy, as a matter of fact. Because what we are saying is that if you connect a inductor to a battery. Obviously, you are imposing a voltage on it. So this is the polarity of the voltage, no question about that. And we are saying that the, the IDT goes this way. But suppose it goes the other way, okay? Well, in this case, you have this uh, device here with plus here, minus here, and there is a current coming out. Well, it behaves like a power source because there is a positive power coming of the inductor now. This, of course, contradicts the conservation of energy law. Because if you start from zero current on the inductor, you turn this one on, and then all of a sudden you have current going this way, then it delivers power out of nothing, which is obviously impossible. So therefore, the current has to go this way, and this has to be the IDT, and not the other way around, which sort of is implied if you put a minus sign here. Okay, so let's now go to the errors here. First of all, which I have not indicated, it doesn't make sense if you have a circuit like this, and you put a voltage on the inductor, and then you say that the inductor voltage looks like this, which really doesn't make any sense. So, but as it turns out, there is a hidden assumption here that there is a resistor here, which is not shown. Okay, so let's go with it. So the first thing is, 
as I've said, that the marking of the plus minus here are inconsistent. This is incorrect. This, this is incorrect. So therefore, this is the first error. Second error. If indeed there is a saturation of the current goes up and then stays constant at the given level, then therefore there must be a resistor. So it has to be marked. So this is an error also. And then, of course, you can talk about the voltage on the inductor independent of the voltage of the source that is a different voltage. The, the voltage is not impo imposed on the inductance but rather on the series connection of the inductance plus the resistance, okay? So this is okay. So this is number two. Number three, if we assume that the current goes this way and stays here constant, there is an inductor and there is a resistor and therefore this is the equation. This is not the equation. This is the first order equation. You have to take into account the resistance. And if this is the case, then we come to number four, then the rise will be exponential. If you have a resistance, the rise will be exponential. And this is assuming, of course, that the time constant is smaller than T on. That is, that within the T on, you can see the behavior of the RC circuit. I'll talk about the other situation later on. So in this case, if the time constant is smaller than T on, then therefore you see here an exponential rise, like this is the equation of course, and same way you'll see a jump in the voltage on the inductor because at the point zero, there's zero current, zero voltage drop on the resistor, all the voltage is on the inductor, here it is. Polarity is plus, as we have said, if this is the marking, plus and minus, and again, exponential decay. And of course, we have now the most crucial point here, and that is when this switch is turned off. When this switch is turned off, we have a situation of the IDT is infinity, because uh, assumingly, uh, at zero time, we are turning off the current, disconnecting it, therefore we're going to have a infinite voltage, very high, in this case, negative voltage. So therefore, in this case, what we're then going to see, we're going to see a voltage jump here to negative, very, very high voltage. All the power will be dissipated, perhaps by an arc or maybe some failure of a component, and then the current will immediately go down to zero. So this is really the case. Certainly not like that. Now, there is another point here, and that is that here we see breaks in the current. If we assume that this is the current, okay, no matter how it was generated, this is the current of the inductor, then the voltage across it should be the following. Here, the IDT is constant. It's a constant voltage. Starting from the IDT zero, zero voltage. The IDT zero, zero voltage. So we're going to see a voltage like that. And during the negative slope, same thing. Here is a constant voltage. Here it is. While here, the IDT zero, the IDT zero. So there's no voltage here. So if you assume that this is the waveform, then this is the voltage across the inductor. Now, if assume that the time constant is much, much larger than T on, that is, we have a large, relatively large inductance and relatively small resistance, like in the case of PWM converters, for example, then we are at the beginning of the slope here, and therefore we're going to see a straight line, certainly not like this and not like this, it will not saturate, it will be a straight line, even though there is a resistance. I mean, it's approximately a straight line. We are looking at the be very beginning of the exponential because the time constant is very large. And during this time, the voltage, of course, is uh, constant. And then, again, if we open here the switch, there is a 
sharp the IDT, there is a negative voltage here, and this current will come down to zero. So this will be the shape with a resistor, but if the resistor is small, that is approaching, I mean, what is important is, of course, the time constant, the ratio here, as compared to this time T on. Now, another point is, which I label as an error, that you, you just cannot, cannot draw a circuit in which you have an inductor and a switch which is turned off and you interrupt the current. You cannot do that. You have to somehow capture the current if this is turned off. So one way to do it would be to put another switch. So this would be like a synchronous lag in a DC to DC converter. In this case, during the on time, we're going to see a straight line. This is the beginning of the slope. But then, as we have here a short, the IDT is zero because the voltage is zero, and this is assuming the resistance is very small. Okay, this is for this case. So in this case, we're going to see a current which sort of continues, does not drop. Well, it eventually drops because there is a, always a resistance, but uh, you can see that you might see a very small change here depending on the time constant. And again, the voltage, of course, will go down to zero because you're imposing a zero voltage here. And so this will read the picture. Another way is, of course, to put a dial so that as you open the switch, the current is sort of captured by the dial. Well, there is a dissipation on the voltage drop of the dial, but this is not the subject matter here. And if in this case we're going to have a resistor and the time constant is shorter than T on, that we are going to see the exponential rise. Obviously, the voltage on the inductor will be a jump again, an exponential decay. And then, as this switch is turned off and the current goes through here, we have a, again a decay with the same time constant due to the fact that we have a voltage drop on the resistor, which is kind of causing a DIDT in the negative direction. And therefore, the current will decay. And of course, on the inductor itself, we're going to see waveform like this of the voltage. So this is my account of the error in this tutorial. Maybe there are some more that I've uh, missed. So if somebody finds more errors, please write it at the comment section of this video. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.